Okay. Uh, Ken Smith can see it right here. I just saw him heard it. Okay, give us a couple of seconds to get everything straightened out. I, this live is always a bit of a pain in the butt. So hang tight. There's Again, there's, there's also a delay. So if you ask a question, uh, give me a second to catch up to you. Uh, is everything good? Everything's good? All right, I don't know. Well, let me click on this. Okay, good. All right, so I can see who's there now. All right, so we'll give it a couple seconds to let guys catch on and come on. Um, there's a few people that were going to join us, and just give them a chance to break away from what they're doing so they can join us for this. What we're basically going to be doing today is just going over a live boxing unboxing event. There's some uh, tools that are going to be studied from Lee Nielsen. I want to clarify ahead of time, these tools were actually purchased by us. They were not given to us by Lee Nielsen. Um, Lee Nielsen, like me, doesn't believe in paid reviews. I think it's, um, I think it's improper, and they think it's improper, which I agree. You can't be unbiased if it was given to you. So they weren't given to me. They aren't on a loan. They, are belong, they belong to us. So we'll be going through each and every one of them at some point in the near future and reviewing each tool as we come up to it. Today, all we're doing is unboxing it, kind of going over stuff and, and just checking and seeing what we got. I haven't opened these boxes at all. They, they arrived yesterday afternoon. So I haven't seen them at all. I've just seen the boxes. They were taken out of a big box. So the next thing is be showing you guys as I go through what I have. Two of the planes have been previously opened already. I already own them, so they weren't picked up. Um, bought a number one off of eBay a while back and a number four, which was sent initially by um, Lee Nielsen Tool Works for me to study, and then I've since purchased it, so it's uh, in my permanent stash as well. Well, hopefully the video on your end is a little clearer than it is on my end because it's pretty uh, pretty fuzzy over here. How does it look to you guys? I mean, or is it clear to you guys? We're using a different camera this time around. It's a little easier setup, and it won't shut off every 10 or 20 minutes like the other one did. Um, just shoot me some feedback as to how it sounds and how it looks to you guys. Okay, so I guess everybody that's going to be here uh, for the time being, well, they're here. And then guys will, I guess, come in and go as they, as they please. So the first one, this is one I actually bought off of eBay, I don't know, about four or five months ago, four months ago, three months ago, whatever it was. I bought it. It was um, in a nice condition. It was an earlier one. As you notice, the white box, it's one of the earlier Lee Nielsen's. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And I've done some extensive study work on it. It's never been used. It's a little Lee Nielsen number one. You guys have seen pictures of it on the website. So. And the earlier Lee Nielsen's I've noticed are, are a lot, the castings are a lot rougher. Uh, the later ones, he did a much better job. But again, everything comes along as progress goes forward right one thing i noticed about this plane as i i've taken it apart and put it back together a few times is the frog which is based off of a bed bedrock style plane the frog fits in a little slot that's in here very tight i mean ridiculously tight which is uh kind of a nod to the quality and again i've actually studied these planes a little bit and i'll go through more detail later on on a youtube video but the quality is phenomenal on most of them. But again, I might find a little surprise in one of these boxes. I don't know. The nice thing about not being paid or being given these planes is I can be as honest as I'd like to be about the planes. And if I see something I don't like, for those of you out there that know me, I'll send it back. 
And at the end of the day, they're really, really expensive planes, so I would expect them to be of top notch. So, anyways, little guys, just a bronze, little bronze, number one. That's it. Pretty simple. The earlier boxes are white. This one was probably sold during their time when they were dealing with woodcraft. As a matter of fact, if you, I don't know if you can see this sticker that's right here, but this sticker looks like a woodcraft sticker. Everything going smooth over there? Good. All right, so that was the Lee Nielsen number one. I'll give it to my handy assistant here. Uh, by the way, guys, the, the guy that's always running the cameras and the mics and all that stuff that has managed to set all this stuff up, this, this guy right here, Nicholas Gardunia. He's my uh, my nephew. He's done a pretty good job. Yeah, hi, Nicholas. Is that down over there? All right. This plane hasn't been opened yet, or at least by me it hasn't. Obviously, they opened it there. It's a bronze Lee Nielsen number two. And this is how they come from the factory, packed up. Nice little touch. A lot of bubble wrap here to keep the plane from back and bouncing back and forth. They've had a lot of experience shipping planes out, so they probably learned over time how to do it and how not to. There is some paperwork here. Basically going over. Oh, according to this, it says our standard bench planes, except for the number one, are based off of the Stanley Bedrock design. Because Stanley never made a number one. At least in the Bedrocks. They did make a, a 602, but they never made a 601. That was done by Patrick Leach. Okay, this is cool. Of course, it's got the uh, state of California, everything causes cancer notice in it. And this is a nice little touch. Um, a lot of guys would be like, oh, I get that with my shoes. This is going to keep the moisture off of the planes. And bronze darkens quickly, and obviously steel likes to rust. And there's actually something that I'll be reviewing in regards to Lee Nielsen's iron planes, the ductile iron planes, that have something to do with all that um, rust. I think it's one of the, actually one of the flaws of Lee Nielsen's. All right, let's see what we got here. I agree, Alex, as far as uh, the non Wood River planes, but the you know the thing is at the end of the day it's 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 an inexpensive plane, and Woodcraft and Lee Nielsen they they just didn't get along. It's a very high-end product. The Lee Nielsen's are a very high-end product. And honestly, I used to be a big fan of Wood, Wood River. Huge fan of Wood River. Or not Wood River, uh, Woodcraft. Used to be a huge fan of Woodcraft. But a lot of their stuff's gone to China. Uh, the, the quality has dropped significantly. If you guys, any, any of you guys ever go down to Atlanta or the Atlanta area, do yourself a huge favor and wander into Highland Woodworking. It's a... Uh, It'll blow your, blow your eyeballs out of your head. Absolutely wonderful place. The people are really smart, really wonderful there. The prices are a little high, but the tools for new tools, the best of the best there as far as what's available to buy at a retail store. So it's woodcraft, but really high quality. All right, so now this is this is new. I've seen Lee Nielsen planes in the boxes before. This is This is a new one to me. I'm assuming... This is because it's bronze. Um, but normally it's just this, which is a, a rust preventative wrap. But uh, this is wrapped around the plane as well. That's, that's different. I've never seen that before. Wow, that is a shiny, 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 shiny plane. On this one, you'll notice the iron is marked. It's actually marked uh, Lee Nielsen, the number one that's not marked, at least the one I have. I don't know what they are, um, the newer ones, the newer number ones, if they're marked or not. I'm not unsure of that. If Pat Thomas was here, actually, Pat Thomas just showed up. Hey, Pat, are the newer 
Lee Nielsen number ones. Are the irons marked? Are you aware of the if they're marked or not? This this number two is. Oh, uh, I need the screwdriver. I forgot the screwdriver because these are they always crank them down when you first get them. So when you guys get a new Lee Nielsen plane, um, the guys at the factory always crank the screw down extra tight. You won't be able to pull this and, and pop it off. They do that so that if it's shifting, it shifts around during shipping, this won't get loose and just chop the plane all the hell. You know, it's funny. I, I think the tote's actually a different design, too. I'll have to compare this against the uh, the number four that I have. I kind of feel like the number four, it's more of a rounded texture here. Thanks, Pat. So all the Pats aren't marked. So I guess the number one, they just didn't mark the iron. Maybe it was too small for them to mark it. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this tote. and It, it looks like this, there's more of a flat here where it's normally a little bit more round. We'll, we'll take a look at the, the number four in a minute which is one that I got uh, last year. And I, I swear, I think the old ones are rounder. And of course, I'm still waiting on my nephew to grab the screwdriver. It's never where you need it. All right. Technical difficulties. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Let me grab a screwdriver. Between that water, like 20 or 30 planes over there by the photo booth. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm back. We got to see the inside of this thing, especially for the two junkies. <laughs> Jonathan, you're right. I do need a magnet bar with a dozen standard screwdrivers on it. But I don't know if you can't see this. I've actually modified this old Craftsman. Well, old. It's a couple year old Craftsman big six-year-old craftsman screwdriver i've modified it a little bit on the ends and it just happens to be the one that i use for all the planes hey bob okay so this is interesting this is looks like it's copper and of course this is bronze the whole the whole plane's pretty much bronze but this looks like it's actually copper. That's interesting. There's a nice film on here of what feels like oil, like a silica oil, silicon oil or something or another. It's really, really thin film. The iron is actually in pretty darn good shape. There's some oil on the back of the iron, kind of how I would store a plane. Surface ground iron, nice and thick. Of course, it's one of the things Lee Nielsen's famous for. Um, the chip breaker looks like it's going to need some work in order to be where I like them to be. Uh, but this is looks like it's a pretty solid thing. And then later on when I do the videos uh, for each of the planes, I'll go through what I had to do to them to make them my, to my standard, which shouldn't be much. The casting quality is um, is pretty good. The machining work on here is quite good as well. So I tell you what, Pat Thomas actually brought up. Let me see. What? Yeah, I'm I'm reading that right now. Uh, hold on one second, guys. I'm I'm reading what Red Abney said. Uh, is Lee Nielsen? So the question is. Has Lee Nielsen made an attempt to incorporate the better attributes from the great plane makers, for instance, thicker irons, or have they pretty much hewn to the Stanley designs? Um, yes. To answer your question, yes. It's it's basically a Stanley bedrock with CNC grade machining. The machine work is, is phenomenal on these things. 
and I'll, I'll go through that a little bit later on. Again, I have studied them a little bit. Um, a lot of the attributes are of Stanley, Stanley Bedrocks. The irons are way thicker. I mean, way, 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 way thicker. Even thicker than a you old Union iron, which is a pretty darn thick iron. They're somewhere around the territory of Ohio, at the very end of the tapered Ohio irons. So they are monster thick. The chip breaker, as far as rigidity goes, the chip breaker is massively thick as well. I mean, just take a look at that. It's 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 insane how thick those two are. So and that that helps again from chatter. It's just a rigidity thing. So I I guess my biggest my the biggest thing I'm noticing right now that's that's bothering me is the tote design. I'm not I'm not a big fan of the tote design. It just doesn't it doesn't look right. It looks cheesy. So I mean again, I don't know how comfortable it's gonna be in use. I mean listen, I bought these for use. These guys are actually gonna get put to use. They weren't they aren't shell queens. Um then I'll go through later on why we, we have them and all that stuff. But All right, so let's wrap this back up. You want to toss me the number three? be interesting to see what the tote is on the number three, like how it feels, how it looks. <laughs> they had them in a certain way. Good luck getting them back that way, right? And bear with me, guys, putting this stuff back in the boxes until I go through and do the review on each one of them individually. They'll have to be protected, obviously, so they don't get damaged or banged up. Kind of hard to do a review on something that's damaged. And, and again, for you, those of you who are just joining us, uh, no, Ken, they're, they're, they're cheery, just like the traditional ones that they're cheery. Um, anyways. For the guys of, for the, those of you that just showed up, we got 17 of you watching right now. Um, well, 16 now. Good. Um, anyways, these were purchased. They weren't on loan, and they weren't given to me by Lee Nielsen. There's absolutely zero affiliation between me and Lee Nielsen. Alex, I'll get into that a little bit. I'll get back into that a little bit later on, as far as the backlash and stuff like that. That, that these planes experience, that's something I'm going to be showing you as I go through each one of these planes. I mean, there's there's literally a one through seven here, and then a couple of specialty planes to go through. So, all right, so here's number three. The number three is also bronze. Um, Lee Nielsen now offers the planes all the way up through through a number four. They're all bronze. I happen to have one of the iron ones before they discontinue doing the bronze. So here we are again with the with the, the filler inside. All right. So the tote is still got a flat on it on the side here. It's still got a flat. It's not as noticeable as it was on the number two. Troy, seriously, try not to kill, you, kill yourself, buddy. <laughs> Listening's cool, but don't, don't kill yourself watching the video. All right. So. This is actually a pretty this 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 number three feels pretty heavy. Okay, same thing. A little bit of a nice coating on there. This is also copper. Be interesting to see with the number four, this older one, if it's got copper or not. I don't remember there being copper there. Okay. Nice coating of oil. Again, nice thick irons. The edge looks in pretty good shape. The grind is from side to side on the, the chip breaker, and that's probably one of the things that I'll be addressing. I don't really like that. I feel like that's a place for a, for a fine shaving to snag on. But um, again, I'm kind of picky when it comes to my chip breakers. Um, machine work. It's really, really, really well done, although this is all fly cut. Well, that's be something I'll address in the review, but I see two different fly cut patterns here going from opposite directions. Uh, I'll have to take a peek at that. 
we'll be looking at that with uh, drop indicators and stuff like that and see how, how all it went. Um, casting quality is decent, for sure. Nice polish top of the cheeks. Sole looks nice and clean. We'll check it for flat later on. Um, the wood seems to be of a, of a pretty high grade of maple, or not maple, uh, cherry. It's got a nice little, you probably can't see it with this, the quality, this quality camera. It's got a little streak right down the middle. It almost looks like a crack, but it's not. It's a streak. And it actually goes in line with the screw, with the screw alignment there. And guys had asked if Lee Nielsen clocked all their screws. Uh, by clocking, I mean turning them all exactly to the same degree. Um, this should obviously answer your question. They don't clock them. So that's a myth. Uh, bud, 45 degree angle. And yes, you're absolutely right. It, they're, they're heavy. Probably about four pounds on a number three. Versus on a Stanley, it would be about three and a quarter pounds, something like that. So yes, they're, they're much heavier. But again, you're also talking about bronze versus, you know, gray iron. All right, let's uh, grab the number four, Nicholas. All right, so guys, this number four is the one that I've, I've actually had a chance to do a drop indicator on. I can answer more questions about the number four because I've actually had it in my possession for about a year. And it's one that I've studied the absolute heck out of. I've checked it for square. I've checked it for flat. I've checked it for issues with machining. I've, I've actually really, really, really gone through this other plane. So I can actually answer more questions about the number four than I can about this one. Hold on. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, again, there's a few things I'm now curious about from the three and, and the, uh, and the two. So. Hey, Steven. Surprised you came in. No levels. <laughs> No levels or anything like that. But good to see you here. Guys, uh, Steven Cedar is here. He's uh, the resident level guy. You got any questions about levels? He's uh, he's the guy to go see. You got a rare level? You want to know about it? He's probably the one to be able to tell you about it. Hey, Steven, you want to see the levels first, don't you? Okay, as I suspected, the number four, the tote, is more round. So that flat is a new thing. Again, this is about a year old. Do you see here, this is much, 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 much more of a round shape. It's got a much rounder shape to it. So, there you go on that one. Again, I put this thing through hours of use. And yes, it is It is copper. This part is copper. It's just something I never really took note of. I studied the hell out of the plane, but again, just not something I noticed. The irons are about the same. And this one's going to be a little different because I've actually sharpened it dropped the micro bevel on it needs to be sharpened again there's a little bit of a chip out of the corner here um from working really really hard wood but th these are pretty much effectively the same thing as far as uh the ones i just opened before that are brand spanking new so <sighs> so again bronze frog um the adjusters, to answer the guy's question before about the adjusters on these, whether or not there's a lot of slack in them, there is very little slack. They're, they're pretty tight. You, 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 can, you can bump them back and forth pretty good. There is a little bit of play, as there will be, with any, with any plane. You, if, you have the, if the thread pitch is tight enough, or I'm sorry, if the, th if the threads are tight enough inside of the, the neural nut, it won't move. 
So you need some sort of space in there to allow that, that nut to, to spin freely. So there is a little bit of slop in there, but it's just minute. It's very minute. It's like some of the Type 2s and Type 1 Miller's Falls I've had my hands on. Um, some of the Stanleys I've found, it's like literally like five turns before it actually engages. They're usually worn pretty bad. Um, I, I, I assume, based on the fact that this is brass and this is bronze, that they'll probably wear similarly. Um, I'm not 100% sure. That I haven't, that'll be years down the road for me to tell you whether or not, or at least how I feel about that. So, and I can tell you one thing about the number four, uh, as far as my testing is going, this plane, the tolerances on this plane are insane. I mean, literally, to a machinist's degree, they're nuts. Um, the sweep across the frog at the top and the sweep across the frog at the, at the bottom, my thousandths indicator, drop indicator, wasn't reading anything. That's, that's literally how flat it was across the face. And then travel from, from the bottom, or I'm sorry, the frog seat, from the bottom of the frog seat to the top of the frog seat, there was, I think, two tenths, total of two, two ten thousandths of an inch variance. So, insane, right? So, you can tune a plane, blueprint a plane, and you're not going to get that kind of tolerances. It's insane. Which is, again, where you're spending the money. And again, it's CNC's, right? CNC's are, are what make these. If uh, Stanley had CNC's available to him in the 1920s, he probably would have used them too. Um, but uh, Lee Nielsen does a bang up job, at least on this one. I haven't reviewed the other ones because I haven't studied them yet. This one definitely did a bang up job. Yeah, Alex. Um, it depends on the era of the Stanley. Some of the some of the Stanleys have more backlash than others. Um, some of them are horrendous, and then some of them are pretty tight. Same thing with Miller's Falls. Same thing with Sargent. Any of the, any of the older uh, plane manufacturers, the vintage plane manufacturers, you're going to find. It varies. It depends on when they, when they made it. And it also depends on how much has been used. You're talking about a 100-year-old plane. It might have been used for 40 years on a bench every single day. You're going to get wear in the components. It's going to happen. So there's going to be more slop than there is one. It was found in a box from the same time period. If that makes any sense. So the sole on this guy is actually so flat that it rung to my granite inspection plate. I, I just turned it so that I can do a drop indicator on, on a couple of different parts, and it literally stuck to the plate. I had to almost pick the plate up to pick the plane up. So this is flat. And I mean dead flat. So hopefully the other ones are the same. All right, so moving on to the number five. Now, I don't even bother trying to put this back in here. I'm just kind of stuff it in there for now. These are all eventually going to go out in the till anyways. So This is actually probably going to go right back in the shop. Wee. Ah, popping. <laughs> oh, come on, Chris. They're just planes. All right. Chris, you missed you missed the one through four. What was it? actually in the four and a half? Good job. You you read through me asking for a five. I knew the next one was a four and a half. All right, guys, four and a half. Let's see how this compares to the four. This should be iron, like the number four. I actually like the iron planes better. They don't scratch as easy, uh, but there are inherent problems with the iron iron ones as well. Yeah, we'll go with that flat again. I'm going to have to email them and ask them why they switched over. This whole area right here is, is just flat. It's uh, not not as nice. It's got a it's got a nice thick feel to it. It's a four and a half, so you're going to want that. You want it to feel nice and thick and, and solid, but uh, let's see here. So 
purple thing looks really, really... Oh, hey, now that's different too. This is no longer bronze. The yoke is now cast. It looks like gray iron casting. That's interesting. I wonder if they were addressing an issue with uh, durability. And again, this is a uh, copper indicating... I don't know what that casting number is. Again, another casting number that doesn't make sense, right? This time on a modern maker. That is a lot of tool steel right there. That is a monster. Nice and thick. Again, the grind sideways. I'll be fixing that later on. I don't like the grind going sideways, but that's my preference, of course. Uh, Ken, it takes longer to sharpen. And they do, they do stay, the edge does stay a little bit longer. Uh, Kyle, I was un, unaware of uh, Lee Nielsen offering PMV 11. I thought that was Veritas. <laughs> Hi, Chris McManus's mom. Um, these are A, these are um, A2 steel. The irons that I know of, they're E2 steel, which is kind of a bit of a controversy nowadays. Guys are, you know, they're complaining about the A2 steel because it's it's much more difficult to sharpen. If you use diamond plates, it's the same as sharpening an old Stanley blade, to be honest with you. Now, if you're using water stones, then yes, the A2 is a lot more aggressive on the, on the water stones. It does take a bit away from um, the time. You can't just quick, you know, quick up the edges and whatnot. I, I use diamonds, so I don't really notice a huge difference, to be honest with you. Um, now, as far as... Yeah, that's funny, Robert. Apparently, this actually is my Christmas. So, this this is uh, coming into the shop. This is my Christmas. I was told not to ask for anything else. So, anyhow... The machining looks decent on the on the frog on this guy as well. Everything's nice and tight. Um, Kyle, you know what? Let's take a peek. Let's take a peek. That's a good question. The iron sits. The iron sits down. Just 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 a taste, Kyle. It's, it's, it's down in there just a little bit. It's not down a lot. Um, notice real quick, guys, this is the uh, ductile iron version. There's no additional padding inside of here. So, again, it's probably because the other ones were ductile. Or not ductile, um, uh, bronze. So you needed something between the protectant and the bronze. You still want to have, obviously, this paper here to protect the plane, but... You don't want to touch in the plane directly because it'll probably stain the bronze. I don't know how the hell they wrap these up before. So I'm just going to take a loud stab at it. Somebody, I'm sure somebody will send me a note from Lee Nielsen because it's that important, you know. <laughs> uh, we noticed your video. You were wrapping our planes wrong. All right, guys, going on to the number five. We just got the four and a half, four and a halfs done here. We're gonna move on to the number five now. And I tell you what, I don't know how these guys at Lee Nielsen consistently pack these boxes to close and be perfect. I guess when you do enough of them in a day, it matters. But I can't get these damn thing closes. These things closed right. All right. Yeah. So number five, it's gonna be another ductile version. Uh, my son already has a PS4. So, no, I can't deny I'm a PS4. And you know what? I have a job. He doesn't. So, if he wants a PS4, he can go get himself a job, I guess. Maybe that's a, a wrong approach of looking at it. But I work my butt off, so I get toys for that. And again, these are kind of for work, too, Kyle. I will be reviewing these.
All right. Back to that flat daggum toad again. You know, I don't mean to I don't mean to sound like a you know, a whiny guy, but I hate this damn flat-sided toad deal. And again, now we're we're still with the uh we're still with the cast still with the cast yoke. It's a beautiful plane, absolutely gorgeous plane. Oh, well, that just scratched that up. Very good. I guess I probably need to put some duct tape around the end of that thing. Ah, it's going to get scratched in the shop anyway, so it doesn't matter. Again, copper on this guy. And something tells me these irons are a little shorter, too. I'm going to have to check that. Okay. Yeah, good luck seeing my son on a live feed. Not going to happen. My nephew, I let him do a live feed if he'd like. But I, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, the machine work, again, uh, it's, it's definitely fly cut. I don't see any evidence of a of grinding or shaping or anything like that on the uh, bronze. The, the casting quality is really good. I mean, yeah, Robert, I, that's exactly what it is. Robert, for real, that's exactly what it is. When I see that flat-sided tote, I think of a late Miller's Falls or a freaking Stanley Handyman. Um, but listen, if that's my only complaint, it's good. Here's the thing. So I don't really, honestly, as a user, I don't really care about the flat sided tote, but we'll see how this thing bangs me up in the shop after, you know, a couple of months. I've got big hands guys. This is a number five and this is how I hold the plane. As you can see here, we're literally almost wrapping the pinky around down under here. And I usually will use a plane like this in this position. This is how I'm going to hold it. This, this finger right here is a guide against the board, unless I'm going across the face, obviously. But if I'm going along the edge to joint, this is how I'm going to hold it. So that's what I'm gauging comfort on. Um, it's, it, this is going to be one of those things where it may have been an improvement, and it also may have just been cheaper to do. And if it's just cheaper to do, I'll, I will literally get a hold of Nielsen and, and say, listen, do you have any more of your old totes? Can I buy them? Because I... For right now, I'm going to tell you I'm not a big fan. Yes, Bill, I agree. Yes, well, I, again, Walter, I, they just they, something says that the iron looks a little shorter than me. You know, again, I never looked. I never looked to see if they had build dates on the boxes. I know that the different boxes will indicate when they were made. Um, but luckily, I do have, Walter, I do have some of the older Lee Nielsen's. So I'll be able to check iron length. But I kind of feel like the length of the iron is reduced. You know, by a minute amount. But I do feel like it's been reduced a little bit. I might be wrong. It's I, wouldn't be the first time. Um, but I'll, I'll double check that. That's something that I'll... Get into a little bit later and see. All right. Grandpa Tony. Uh, no, Troy, they don't offer custom totes that I'm aware of. Um, we have a celebrity in the mix, guys. Anthony Gardunia just showed up. That's uh, Nicholas's grandfather. He's uh, retired from the Air Force. Really super cool guy. Spent a lot of time fishing with him. Uh, Alex, I'm not sure about the overall. The overall length is what I'm thinking about. The usable length below the notch. I mean, if you look at older Miller's Falls stuff or newer Miller's Falls stuff, 
you're going to have the top of the iron has been shortened down, but the actual usable length at the bottom is the same length. Um, the problem is, is it looks like the plane's been used up. So, but again, I'm going to double check that. It may have just been something that I didn't notice before that I'm noticing now. Yeah, Troy, I, I agree. I totally agree. But listen, there's some guys out there that will make me totes if I really, really, really want them. We've got a couple of guys around the groups that make phenomenal totes. We may have to pay, may have to pay them to make them for me. What are we on next? Five and a half? All right, guys, going to the five and a half. Uh, the other, the other thing I could pot potentially do, bud, is just make these the way I want them. I can also adjust the shape of these, but the thing is, is why, why would I do that? Uh, Walter, no, I have not seen the Lee and tote cutting machines. Uh, be, if you find a video of that, send it over to me. It'd be interesting. I know that they hand polish them when they're done, uh, but I've never seen them actually produce one of their totes. All right, guys, moving on to the five and a half. Yeah, no, but that's, listen, Walter, that's with all companies, right? So it gets more expensive to produce something. What do you do? You have to reduce costs or go out of business. The bottom line is the customer is not going to take the cost. They see something raise 20 30% because your cost went up 20 30%. They're going to leave you. They're just going to stop buying from you. So you have to adjust during the production to make it work. It's that simple. All right. Again, all right. So I, I've come. I'm coming to the conclusion that the new, the new productions, the modern productions, the modern productions. Oh well, that's odd. The iron is actually through the mouth on this one. That's a little weird. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, Tony, he's he's working. He's actually a little smarter than we thought he was. Yeah, well, look at this, guys. Look how far that iron's sticking out. Even Lee Nielsen had Fridays. Well, that's, that's interesting. All right. Crank that back in. Wow. Okay. Uh, something to explore here. That thing is riding way the heck up. I mean, way up. Now, see that iron... There might be something wrong with this uh, with this chip breaker. The the machine slot and the chip breaker is not right. I mean, look how far out this is sticking. This is way out, way 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 out. Look at that; it's almost come off. Just to extend the iron dam. Huh. Flat side. I hate these damn flat sides. I'm sorry. I keep complaining about hate. Uh, Alex, yes. It's pretty much a, a semi-flat. So, but anyways, look at the length of the iron on this. It's way up. This is what I'm used to seeing on the Lee Nielsen's. And it's sticking up. If you look right here, 
it's sticking up quite a bit above here. So I'm thinking the iron is actually shorter on the brand new ones. Um, Carmine, maybe. That's possible. <laughs> Red. I won't send it back. I'm just going to ask him. I'll call on Monday and ask him what the deal is. Uh, because that, I mean, there's like no adjustment left in this. The iron, the, the uh, depth adjuster is all the way back. So I think I'll just have them send me another chip breaker. Because again, the position of where the iron sits is based on the chip breaker. Which it would make sense as to why they had that chip breaker backed all the way up. Uh, which is not good. So I'll make arrangements to get that sent back and figure it out. Hey, listen, I've gone through a lot of planes already, and I've only found one problem, one major problem, other than that I don't like the totes. Uh, so that's not bad. They wrapped these things up pretty interesting, didn't they? Well, there you go. Moving on to the number six size. I think your dad was watching earlier, too. Jumped on for a few minutes. Probably just watching to make sure you were actually doing your work. All right, guys. Yeah, I I totally agree, Walter. I um actually, Walter, you have a bunch of old uh, Lee Nielsen's, don't you? Don't you have a ton of those in the shop? You've been using them for years. Um, are they all covering up the lateral? And hey, Carmine, I I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the deal with the chip breaker. Uh, but really, if it's for, based on width, if it's for the same size, the, the frogs are the same, right? So let's just say that, like, uh, for example, five and a half and six are the same. Um, if the five and a half and six is the same, then the frog will be the same as well. So, eh, again, something to look into. I always like a challenge. All right. Really? Well, that's a shame, Walter. He's starting to get longer, so I can't really... Oh, I'll lose that. All right, again, iron sticking way up. And again, it's way out. Huh. All right, so I'm gonna uh, listen. I'm gonna strip everything down so you guys can actually see what I'm what I'm what I'm looking at here. So now we're talking about the the five and a half and the six are the same here. So let's go ahead and pull. All right, guys, this is just enough for the iron to get down to the bottom of the mount. Look how far out that, adjust, that depth adjuster is. I think it's a mile back. And there's a, just a huge gap. I don't know if you can see inside of there. I'm looking over here. Can you, can you guys see inside of here? Yeah, Walter, I can make those screwdrivers, so there's no way in hell I'd buy one. 
no offense to those guys, but if I can make it, there's no way I'm buying it. At the end of the day, I'm kind of cheap when it comes to that kind of thing. All right, so that's that's nuts. That's like late Stanley production stuff. Um, that's something I'm going to have to look into. But that that's a little frustrating. And again, back to the square totes. Not a fan. <laughs> Trying to locate this damn screw. There it is. The screw didn't want to line up. Okay. Uh, but I'll send you pictures later on of what I'm talking about with this. Um, I'll text them to you so you can see what you can't see on the screen there. Um, you know, Walter, I can look into that. <laughs> Yeah, Bob, you know, honestly, that's the that's part of the point um, in picking these up. Sometimes, uh, Mark, Nickel, you and I, have con we, we've conversed, we've conversed about the number sixes. They are out of their freaking mind. I will probably use this plane and a number four more than anything else. I love the six size planes. Uh, so anyways, going Bob, sorry, going back to what I was saying a minute ago, sometimes buying an older plane is the way to go. I mean, honestly, that's that's the way to go. Um, at the end of the day, these were not cheap. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at almost four thousand dollars worth of planes here. So this is not a very cheap little venture to go into. So now, what could I have bought vintage for four thousand um, dollars? A lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> I will, Tony. She's probably watching right now. Okay. Hey Nick, did you get the did you get the car thing straightened out? Yes, Walter, absolutely freaking right. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I can't I couldn't agree more. It's not so matter the size of the plane, it's how they fit your hand and how 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 you're comfortable using it, right? How comfortable are you using it? Huh? We'll make it fit. It's just a number seven. There you go, princess. Put it on up here. All right. So, uh, just I, real quick, to go after um, what uh, Walter was saying about a number seven. You know, I, I get asked a lot of times, guy, guys ask me, well, do I need a number eight? And uh, you'll have to excuse my, my uh, candidness here, but I always ask them if they have a small penis. And they say, well, why would, why would that matter? And I was like, because you're compensated. Now, listen, unless you're making tabletops for a living, and that's all you're making, just big monster tabletops for a living, and that's all you do is flatten tabletops and smooth out long, flat tabletops, you don't need an eight. 
you'll beat yourself to death taking a number eight to join a board. You'll beat yourself to death. What the hell's the point? You can do the same thing with a number six or a number seven. Absolutely. So hey, it's my opinion. But that's what guys ask me all the time. I tell them it's a compensation tool. It's not a it's not a usable tool, it's a compensation tool. I'm a little confused, Carmine. These aren't Canadian. These are American made Lee Nielsen, Lee Nielsen's. Well, at least I hope they're all American made. As far as I understand, they're American made. All right. Well, this one looks like it had a little fun with the box. A little busted here, and the box is a little torn up there. And here we go with the depth adjuster all the way out again. Thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> You're all right. Just hold on to it. You got long, strong arms. <laughs> yeah, we do need a bigger table. All right, so uh, going back to the flat tote again, I a little disappointed with the flat tote. I, sh I should have bought these planes last year, but it is what it is. Um, and the depth adjuster again, we're way out. I guess it, as long as it works, it doesn't really matter. But that kind of bothers me a little bit. It, it shouldn't, but it does. It bothers me a little bit. Robert Vandelson. Yes, they make a number nine if you buy it online. I don't think they make them currently make them anymore. Um, they do pop up on eBay and they're pretty expensive. It's kind of like buying a regular Stanley number nine. <laughs> Is he talking what? Oh, he's talking about my big boy? Oh, but uh, Alex, my my compensating plane, my it's a smoother. It's not longer than a number eight. I think it's about the size of a of a, a number six, but it's wide. It's not it's not about the length. It's about the width, right? So any anyhow, <laughs> uh, fly cut surface. The irons, uh, it's really nice. I'm gonna have to compare it to the other ones. I have to compare it to the to the number four because that's the one I have that's still older. And again, this 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 guy, little guy right here is gray iron. They didn't make these out of uh, out of the uh, bronze anymore. The frog's still bronze. Uh, Alex, we, we're still talking about the plane not being real, right? <laughs> as long as we're talking about the plane, yeah, the plane's not real. The other reference, it's kind of real. And you guys, it's funny. If you're watching my nephew sit here, he's getting really uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> oh, guys. Enjoying myself. You guys enjoying yourselves? My mother-in-law is watching, so I'll, I'll save the I'll save the comments, uh, the, the interesting comments for later. Okay. Interesting little tidbit there, Bill. Didn't know that. Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. We talked about this. You got a 26 inch keen cutter. We were just talking about guys compensating. I wouldn't announce that too loud. That's two inches larger, larger than, than uh, the typical guy compensating. Yeah. <sighs> 
you know, Mark, I guess I really haven't gone over how much I like the flat-sided tote yet, have I? Um, you know, I'm known for, I'm, I'm really known for being uh, docile and not opinionated and whatnot, right? Yeah, I hate it. I hate the flat-sided tote. <laughs> I know you wanted to hear about it again, so I just bring it up again. All right, uh, one of one of my one of my more favorite versions here is a sixty-two. God, please have a round tote. That's all I'm asking. Just have a round tote because I'll use the heck out of this one. Please have a round tote. Please have a round tote. <laughs> Yay! We win. It's not as flat as the other one. I'm so excited with that. Ah, they're so much more comfortable. Now this is this is a really high quality plane, guys. And honestly, in all aspects, this is a beautifully well made plane, and they solved a lot of problems that Stanley had with the same plane. Um, you don't normally see these guys with blown out mounts, so and that's that's one of the Achilles' heels for the Stanleys. The Stanley 62, the mouth is usually just shattered so these adjust really well um and they work good so that's really all that matters right although i will warn you one thing when you go to sharpen that iron you better keep it square there's almost literally no adjustment side to side so you got to get that thing dead nuts square and keep it razor sharp this guys i i'm gonna hold it up to the camera i hope the focus works right take a look at that tote that tote is much rounder and so much more comfortable. I just need them to, yeah, no, give me these for the rest. That's, that's all I ask. That's not a cheap crap tote. I love it. Very good, very good, very good. One of the things I like about these is they, they polish the outside here, but they leave this alone. I love that little two-tone deal. All right. Well, that guys, that I, that actually made my uh, made my evening there. I was getting a little frustrated with these damn square totes, and then this one popped up with a nice round tote on it, and that that makes me happy. Uh, Alex, I think it was. Thanks, Chris. I'm I'm glad I'm not the only one that's complaining about it. Hey, Mark, did you see that tote? That's a man's tote. I might as well take this thing right out and go put it in the shop. I'm happy with it. As long as the, the temper on the iron is good, that, that one will stay with me for a while. Yes, Walter, I will be having some questions for Lee Nielsen tomorrow. Like, um, you got any old totes? All right, why is this not going back in there the way it came out? <laughs> uh, we'll make it work, right? All right, any more down there? It's all over here. All right, so now we're digging from the next pile. I can probably. It's probably, or they just didn't change that specific one. We'll take these. So we're not doing the scrapers yet. Well, that's a chisel plane. Take that. All right. Take that. Take that. This is one that I've never had, guys. Um, and I've always wanted to try it out. I saw it on their website. And guys, guys have, have said a lot of good things about these. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one in particular. And again... I'm kind of really hoping it doesn't have the new tote. This is that. I'll mix them up because I don't forget one. Yes, Red, please, you help me. Let's go smite that tote maker. Let's let's take him out and get him drunk, run him back to the machine so we can do it right. 
Dang it. Freaking square sided tote. I'm excited about this one. But again, flat side. I'm starting to think Ken might actually be right. That 62 is older stock. Because this is nice. This is flatter. This has got much a much flatter um, feel to it. It does feel okay. But um, I don't know. Not not sure yet. I'll render my verdict later on. But it's pretty much laid out the same way as the 62. It's just it's a narrower body. And, of course, you got your openings in your cheeks. So all the shavings out. And you can run across the sides here to uh, grab it. So uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. It's a low angle. And that should help on some difficult woods and whatnot when you're trying to uh, grab it on an edge or something like that. But it's this is it's a really really nicely made plane. It does feature the the knickers, which is really nice having those knickers as far as use goes. Um, I, I really wish the Phillips head screw was a flathead, uh, just to be a little bit more traditional. I mean, they you do use flatheads here and here and here and here. I would have been nice if they kept that flat. But again, it's, now we're starting to really break it down, which I'll be doing reviews on each one of these. And really breaking it down. And that'll probably be one of the things I'll bring up. All right. Why do you keep dropping them things? Ah, it's too far. It's right in front of you. <laughs> oh, you're all right, Nicholas. You're all right. No matter what everybody tells you, you're an all right guy. It's funny, that's what guys tell me. Any questions so far, guys? We're getting down to we're getting down to the to the brass tacks on some of this other stuff. I guess the good thing with Facebook is if uh, if you don't see this live, you can always come back and look at it later. Somebody will probably try to. Blackmail, blackmail Lee Nielsen with my uh, comments. Who knows? They don't care. At the end of the day, uh, well, actually, I, I can't say that. I, I can't say that. Lee Nielsen really does care about his customers. Um, I had a, a dovetail saw that I bought, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, 8 years ago, 7 years ago, something like that. And it was a really nice saw, but it would bind in the cut. And I sent it back, and they literally replaced the entire saw and had me another saw in like 3 days. I didn't charge me a penny. They were wonderful to deal with. So as far as companies go, a cool tool maker, I you're not going to get a complaint out of me out of that. They they did phenomenal. Um, definitely going to have to have a chat with the totes about the totes though. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right. Another plane that a lot of people consider useless. Well, they can consider them useless all they want. I think they're wonderful. I think they work really well. And they're handy to have in the shop. However, a word of it, word of advice: build a box for it. You will cut the crap out of yourself taking this off the shelf, putting it back on the shelf. Build a box for it. Leave it in the box, which is what I'm going to end up doing for this little guy. But these are very useful. Yay! I'm going to have to find the bigger one they made. They made one that was about that big as well. Which is basically a copy of the 97. So, uh, but it's a 97 and a half, little tiny chisel plane. Um, on the on the Stanleys, you typically find damage on the corners of the mouth, or the mouth. Geez, there's no mouth on this. On the corners here of the supporting edge, you'll find damage on the corners, and that's usually from being dropped, or banged into something, or or that kind of thing. And it does hurt the the use of the plane. Uh, this being bronze, I would think it would dent maybe, but I'm not quite sure. This one I've never owned before. I'm dying to see if it's solid underneath this iron. Ah, oh, this that's pretty solid. That is, that's a that's a pretty solid surface in there. There's a little bit of a relief here. I mean, gotta save a couple of bucks on the bronze. Bronze is not cheap. By any stretch of the imagination, is bronze cheap? Um 
if this is anything like the 62, the engagement on these are, are really tight. Really, really, really high quality and really tight. Uh, the other thing I don't, I'm not, I'm not crazy about here is that the edge of this, the edge of this lever cap is squared off and it should smooth out down to the iron. I mean, you're not going to be taking big old monster shavings with this. You're, you're going to be using it and skewing it in to cut off a dowel head or, you know, some sort of a piece of joinery. Rick. Rick Perez, it comes in a box. A wooden box. Funny man. I'm actually, Rick, I'm surprised you've been as docile as, as you are being today. You're usually uh, wound about tight as a string. Your, your, uh, your fun sarcasm isn't kicking in yet. I at least I haven't heard any. I haven't heard any of that. That's what she said jokes out of you so far. Okay, time to play with these scrapers. Oh, geez, now it don't fit in here. What the heck? Did you hand me a smaller box? It don't want to go. You hand me a smaller box. I know you did. You changed the box. You're just sitting here. How'd you change the box that fast? You're like a magician. All right. Go ahead and hand the other two up. I'll just put one over here. Huh? There are three. Jeez, why you keep buying planes? Yeah, no, Robert, um, I, I agree with you there. It's a, it's a lot more usable size, which is why I bought that one. Um, I'll probably use it in the shop more. Now, when it comes to the 97, there are a lot of uses for a 97. When you need a larger reference area to cut something flush, a 97 really does come in handy. Uh, having that little guy in there, you don't really have a lot of, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of meat behind it. You can't just kind of swipe into something. Um, but they're both very useful. They're both very useful. They both have their, their places, right? All right. So let's go. You know what? Let's go with this one first. Just, just because. You guys have. <laughs> origami skills are lacking. Yeah, my origami skills suck, Rick. Absolutely horrible. So do my people skills. You know what? Uh, you know what, Bill? We should do. We should. We should start a uh, petition. Um, uh, petition.gov make Lee Nielsen make rounded totes again. I mean, <laughs> everybody's doing their own little, uh, oh, we're going to protest this, we're going to protest that. Let's all woodwork, all of us woodworkers, all of us tool guys, let's go protest the Lee Nielsen factory for round totes again. <laughs> Listen, most of the guys that buy their planes, they're not going to care. I happen to get like, what, a thousand, two thousand planes come through my hands each year? You kind of get used to a certain feeling that you like it. So I mean, I I probably one out of one out of fifty people that they're going to deal with that actually give a crap what shape the toad is. Um, I care. I see a lot of planes. All right, Red. You can watch the rest of it later on. I guess it's going to be up on uh, YouTube in here. So. All right, so, square tote. Yes, Jonathan, I love it. You start, you start getting, the, if you get those hats made, I'll, I swear I'll buy one. That's freaking hilarious. Make totes rounded again. And then put the Lineals logo on the back of it. That, that That's freaking amazing. Um, yeah, square. Again, flat-sided totes, guys. I, I don't, I don't get it. I tell you what, the, this thing adjusts quite smoothly.
Some pretty good talents here. Some pretty good talents. Nice and thick. Scraper iron there. <laughs> That's funny, John. Yeah, I do vomit a little bit too when I see that. Um, I'm looking looking forward to using this. It's a lot of guys they see one twelves are useless tools. No, they're not. They work really well. You've got a funky freaking grain to deal with. You got something that's you know it's interlocking, crossing itself. You can't plane it. Low angle tooth. It doesn't matter. You really can't plane it. There are some infills out there that might be able to, to tackle the job. Break this out. I mean, honestly, just get it done, nice and smooth, nice and nice and simple. So, nice quality. Make the toes rounded again. That's all I got to say. Um, Kyle, I would probably say it's just easier. It's easier and faster. Um, flat side totes, they're just faster. And yeah, I would say probably a uh, reference surface. That, that might explain something. But i just not a big fan. And again, I'm probably just being picky, right? All right, 212. Another little useful guy if you're working on uh, face frames, small doors. Mr. Sullivan, good to see you join us, my friend. It's just cute. I mean, honestly, it's just cute. And it will get a lot of use. This thing will be scratched up and beat up within a couple of months. You know, I, I agree with you, Kyle. I really do. I agree with you. You can be a little picky. At the end of the day, you got to be realistic too, though. If he, he's got to make money. If Tom can't make money making these planes, he'll go to business. He goes out of business, then we really are stuck. I mean, uh, Clifton's are freaking expensive. The only other, the only other expensive game. <laughs> yeah, right, Ken. Um, the, only, the only other, you know, expensive toolmaker out there that really that makes a line of planes like this is Clifton. And Clifton's are no joke expensive. And they're quite tough to come by. But you don't want to talk about, listen, high, high, high in quality on the Clifton's. Just stupid high in quality. They're worth they're worth the money too. And as much as I've complained about the totes, guys, I want you to I want you to understand. Lee Nielsen makes a bitch in plane. Absolutely makes a bitch in plane. They're wonderful. However, I just don't like the tote. And again, I probably said that. What? Is anybody counting how many times I say I don't, I don't like the square totes? Is, is anybody anybody counting that? 27. You're counting it. 27 times. Uh, you know, Kyle, I got a while back, I got a Wood River number three. Um, and I bought it at one of the tool shows and just bought it for curiosity's sake. I was surprised. It actually worked quite well. There was a few things I didn't like about it, though. Um, I sharpened it up. It took longer to set up than, than the Lee Nielsen. And again, I'm, I'm real picky as far as, like, the chip breakers go and the mating surfaces. And so I do go through and tune all that stuff. It's just something that I'm accustomed to. I mean, Miller's Falls, Stanley, Sargent, Union, Ohio, Lee Nielsen, Clifton. I don't give a crap if I'm using it. There's certain things I expect it to do, and most of them don't do that. So I'll, I'll go through and adjust that stuff. I'm not going to heavily tune it. Um, but the Wood River wasn't bad. And it, Listen, if you're on a budget, they're a lot cheaper than these. So it's not a bad deal to go through and get a Wood River. I mean, you absolutely can and save some money. You put a little bit of a little bit of extra elbow grease in there, but hey, it's all good. You know, your time's got to be worth it. If the value in the end of you putting your time in is worth it, the difference in value, by all means, jump on it. I know guys that have Wood Rivers and love them. And I've had a few and love them. Just don't buy the Series 1. Uh, they were uh, not good. 
they took them back and had to fix them. So, uh, you know, it's funny, Jonathan. I did get a bench dog in recently, uh, and I really, really, really wish uh, a dear friend of mine was on here. He lives in Japan. Uh, he got a five, and he's a five and a half collector. And he got one of those bench dogs in and asked me if I would give it a give it a go. Right? The iron was nowhere near flat. The sole was yeah okay, and Everything was very sloppy. <laughs> the depth adjuster, the lateral, everything was just sloppy. Um, if that's all the money you got, the difference between that bench dog and a Wood River, I mean, it's not that much. It's it's it, okay. So it's it's uh, it's a lot, but it's it's not that much. The quality difference is a million dollars worth of difference. Honestly, you send me John, you send me a, a bench dog. I want to put it right back in the mail. Send it right back to you. I don't want. They're junk. Scrub plane, no problem. Uh, there's just you, just too much stuff you'd have to do to them to make them right. Yeah, that's funny, bud. Yeah, uh, Steiner and Sauer planes, they're uh, the bee's knees. They're amazing. And they're also about what the X-Zero cost. So, yeah, no. <laughs> you can afford those absolutely all day long. Um, Alex, I had it in last week. The bench dog was here last week. As a matter of fact, I shipped it to Japan Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? I think it was. Five and a half. I sent it to Japan. Was it Tuesday? Yeah, I shipped out the the uh, five and a half to Japan Tuesday. So it was last week that I tested tested the plane. I do a lot of stuff in the background you guys don't see online. Um, and I, I tested it, and I was not happy with it. So I don't know who, it maybe before that time period, they were good planes, but they weren't good planes. The one I had wasn't good. All right. Last but not least. Square tote. Again, just complaining because I guess haven't had one of these. haven't had a desire to have one of these. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about their use and getting it at tight corners to uh, scrape out edges. And that's one thing that I typically do with a chisel. And it's very time consuming. So I wanted to get this to help me with that problem. Um, this square side of tote's going to drive me crazy. But uh, it's a good solid feel scraper. Um, that surface is right to the edge there and right to the edge there. I, I, this could potentially turn out to be a really, a really good deal um, for me as far as a user goes. The scraper iron is pretty significant, um, the thickness of it. And you can see in the back of it already. It's got a decent edge to it. Um, I'm not sure if I would throw a burr on one of these, like a slight little hang burr on one of these or not. There doesn't appear to be one right now. Uh, there might be a little tiny bit of a burr there. So I'll, again, I'll just take it for a test drive. And when I do the reviews on these, I'll be taking each one for a test drive unused or unsharpened. And then go through and, and explain what I have to do to make it to my standard. And again, Lee Nielsen, uh, as far as manufacturing goes, they're above most standards anyways. I'm just picky. Huh, look at that. I just moved it a little bit across the table and it's actually scraped it a little bit. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So we're down to 16. I guess I started boring the crap out of you guys. Um, that's it. I mean, I'll go into more detail with these uh, later on as far as uh, what's what and all that other stuff individually on each one of them. 
I'm actually going to go through and measure them and that kind of thing. Um, but that's pretty much about it. As far as, and I, I did say I was going to make some announcements here, as far as uh, things go for the website and, and the business and whatnot, um, we are currently in the process of working on making a plane. Not going to tell you what it is. Not really going to go into details. But we are working on making a plane. It's something that's been that's been uh, messed with for about two years. It's been in the design process for about two years, or a little bit more than that. And um, I'm slowly working out some of the bugs that I wasn't happy with and that type of thing. So you will be seeing little shots here and there, what's going on with that. Um, I won't go through the entire process of, of making the plane, but just like little shots here and there, what's going on. Um, Guys, make sure you go to YouTube. This this is going to be up on YouTube later on. Make sure you go to YouTube and check out the video about the giveaways. I'll be giving those two planes away. Free shipping, guys. Free shipping, free to you. If you win the, the giveaway, it's yours. One of those planes is probably worth about 500 bucks. The other plane's worth about 195 to $100. Dollars. Maybe a little bit more because it's tuned. You really, really, really are, are shooting yourself in the foot if you don't go and sign up and, and uh, try to get that. Rick, I've been working on the, 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 the levels. When I make tools, I'm really picky with them. And if something doesn't go well, I stop, which is why the plane's taking two years. I stop and I back up and I let my brain wrap around the solution to the problem. Um, and that's what I'm doing. So right now I'm just kind of stopped a little bit. There's a couple of issues I've run across with the inclinometer part of the level. And uh, when I address those in my head, I'm happy with the solution I have. I'll go back and, and make them. It's, it's just, uh, it's not something that has to be done today or tomorrow. Um, they'll get done when they get done. So, um, yes, Mike, it will. It's not going to have a flat-sided toad. I don't like those. Not that you would know that. I mean, I've never mentioned it before, but it definitely uh, it's going to have a round-sided toad. So, out of the 16 of you, you guys have any questions whatsoever? Is there anything you need? Any uh, Anything you'd like to see? And we're not here to sell you anything today. It's just, uh, just kind of guys talking about tools. If there's anything you'd like to see behind me, take a poke at it. Something you've seen on the website, if you'd like me to go through a little bit, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, upcoming videos, I can go through those if you'd like, any suggestions you'd like to make for those videos. Um, that's about it. I mean, it's, uh, it's a good night. Got to go through a bunch of cool planes. Now, wait here a second. Uh, there is, again, there is a little bit of a delay. So if anybody has anything to say, if not, we'll, uh, let you guys get Round it up and head out of here, and uh, we'll do the same. Um, actually, I have one, uh, one or two. Um, Nicholas, go in the shop and grab the X plane that's back there. Basically, it looks like a big X zero. It's on the shelf in there. I think it's an X five or an X six. Union. Uh, left hand side of the shelf. Oh, Rick, we all learn from all of each other. We all learn from each other at the end of the day. It's um, always, always a learning experience for everything. I did just get literally like 60 or 70 new planes in. So expect, that's it. Um, oh, it's a 5A. So it's a five and a half. Um, I did get quite a few new planes in recently. So expect to see some new stuff. This actually, it's a, a 5A, Mike. Uh, thanks for joining us, Stephen. I really appreciate it. So, just an X5A. 
It's going to end up being... Uh, it's actually a Type 2. Or it's a really late Type 1. Yep, it's a, it's a very, very late Type 1. It's got a Type 2 cap. And the rest of it's Type 1 here. And then the iron itself is Type 2. So, and it's actually not dull. It's not sharp, but it's not dull either. Oh, come on, Steven, do you, do you want to see a level? Unfortunately, the levels you have are a lot nicer than the ones I have. I could probably bore you to death with some levels. I do have one Stanley. I guess it's a number ninety-eight or something. Uh, Mike, you can you can always PM me about this. It's not on the website, so it would just be something I just sell to you direct and we'll deal with that. So PM me after this is all over with. I'll get you some deeper pictures of it, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Ken Fulton, do I have anything Fulton? Do I have anything Fulton? Yeah, you've been around for a lot of buying. I don't think I've bought any Fultons lately. Yeah, Ken, I don't think I've bought any Fultons um, recently. Other than that little uh, number seven you got. I, well, it was actually, it was a 407 version, I think, was it? Yeah, 407 version of the Fulton. That's the only one I think I've gotten in recently. Fulton stuff is just something I don't typically buy. Unless it's an uh, oddball or somewhat scarce. Uh, Rick, no. Hold on. Sigley. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think we got any Sigley in recently either, Rick. Other than that Pattern Makers set. Uh, that's about it. The Pattern Makers Sigley set, that's the only thing I've gotten in recently. Lots of Sargent. Lots of uh, lots of regular union stuff. Um, I did get in quite a bit of record. I got a, a, a tactical five came in. Uh, a couple of state set fours. Um, uh, just other than that, it's just regular Stanley stuff. We're going to be adding a section to the website that's all user tools, inexpensive. Number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, whatever size planes. They're just strictly for users. Um, they may not have the perfect, you know, the totem knob may not be, <laughs> you're funny, Rick. The totem knob may not be typed correct, but it doesn't matter to use it. Um, so there will be a section on the website for that here pretty soon that uh, you'll be able to, and they'll, they'll be inexpensive because um, they're not collectors. They're just something you're going to take, sharpen up, tune up, clean up. They will be untouched, completely untouched, not even clean. They'll be inexpensive. You can do what you want, put your finishes, not touches on them. Sharpen them up, tune them up to your level, do whatever you want to do um, with those. I have, um, because of the Lee Nielsen's coming in, I have two planes that have been with me for about 10 years uh, or a little bit more. Um, they will be becoming available for sale pretty soon. One's a Type 11 5C, which I've used for years. It was my first Stanley number five that I ever bought. Um, and I've got a Type 17 or 18 uh, Stanley number four that I bought quite a while ago as well. Um, Alex, cigar spoke shaves. I do have one. It's a type one, Miller's Falls number one, and it's not for sale. <laughs> I, I've, got a, I've got a thing for uh, spoke shaves. You'll, you'll rarely see spoke shaves for sale uh, by me, and usually they're, they're interesting. Or patented or valuable, um, but I happen to like spoke shaves quite a bit. I've got quite a few of them. Uh, I've got a couple of razor shaves that may be coming for sale soon, but that's it. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. Anything else that you guys uh, got questions about? Want to see? Ah, you know what? I'll show you guys that Leamy plane. I've gotten a lot of messages about it. That little thing is beautiful. You want to grab that for me? 
that's uh, sitting on my desk actually that's one of my one of my recent acquisitions it is absolutely gorgeous this new plane is beautiful um alex are you talking about the uh, cincinnati tool No, Chris, I don't have any uh, Preston type of anything that I know of. Now, you can always check the website. Um, up in the next couple of weeks, there's going to be a bunch, bunch of new stuff going up. This this is this thing, little thing is absolutely beautiful. It's just nuts. It's, it's one of those things you kind of have to see in person. And it's cute. I mean, look at this. It's literally, it's halfway between a number one and a number two size plane. And it's only that long because it's got the, the stick out at the front and uh, the stick out at the back. It's about a number one size here, but this adds the additional, makes it about a two size. Okay, Alex, listen, the website's not going away. I'm not going to take it down. Um, although I will announce something real quick to you guys, to, especially the last 10 that are hanging in there. Um, something that the other guys don't know. The month of December will be 10% off site-wide for the entire month of December. That's uh, basically our way of saying Happy Christmas and Happy happy Holidays, or Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Um, so just so you know, everything on the website, that, that literally could save you hundreds of dollars depending on what you're buying. Uh, let's take, for example, the X0 is a $6,500 plane. 10% off of that, you're saving $650. So that is coming up soon. That uh, starts midnight on the last day of the month. So 12.01 a.m. December 1st, it'll start, and it'll go until 11.59 p.m. Uh, New Year's Eve. So, just to give you any, yeah, good luck, Barbara. I know somebody who's got all those. You know, Barbara, um, he was invited to come in and do an interview. I think we'll have to do that pretty soon. We'll just get the group to put pressure on him to get him out of here. Bring some of his toys along. He, uh, he might actually like that. We don't know, though. Anyways, guys, it's it's been a blast. We're down to nine of you, which is really exciting. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and call it a night. And it was great going through the stuff with you and and whatnot. I'll get I'll get with you other guys. <clears throat> you caught me right at the end there, Bill. Uh, Miller's Falls ten and a half scrub. I had one. It was sold within about 20 minutes showing up. Nine and a half scrubs and ten and a half scrubs. If they come in, they're gone. And me being the Miller's Falls guy, I'm typically the one that gets them. <coughs> but they are very, very not cheap. If you want a user, I got a 40 and a half that will be going up soon. Or buy a 40 off of eBay. It's... That's the way to go for a scrub plane. The Miller's Falls scrubs are not cheap. Ohio scrubs, not cheap. Um, Keen Cutter, not cheap. Again, they're scarce. So, if you collect Miller's Falls, I'm the guy for you to probably know. Um, reach out to me when uh, we're done with the video here, and I'll be more than happy to help you with anything you could possibly need. But I'm the Miller's. I'm the guy who loves to chase down Miller's Falls. One of my jobs, something I, I pride myself on, is I take care of the the uh, underrepresented crowd, the sergeant guys, the Miller's Falls guys, the Union guys, you know, the Fulton guys, the the non-Stanley crowd. I do have a lot of Stanley stuff, and at the end of the day, Stanley is a market, and guys do want Stanley. But I, I pride myself on chasing down the non-Stanley stuff. There's plenty of dealers out there that take care of Stanley guys. Um, it's just that they're there, 
and they don't typically give too much of a crap about Miller's Falls or Union or Sergeant or whatever. And uh, I happen to like that stuff. I think it's cool. So, anyways, that was a, just a quick little, I guess, uh, plug for myself. Anyways, you guys. Uh, uh, okay, so Bill, the price range on a ten and a half. If you find one that's later, uh, black cap, later, uh, later setup, you're probably looking at about three hundred, uh, three fifty, three hundred. A red cap, you're up in the six fifty range. Very, very quickly, right up in the six fifty range. If it's really, really nice, you could be possibly seven, seven fifty. Um, and they, again, they don't last. When I get them in, they're gone. It's that that simple. Um, the nine and a half is a little bit more readily available, um, and they're worth less, two hundred, two hundred and fifty, on average. Um, they they can go a little bit higher than that, but for the most part, about two two hundred and fifty, maybe three hundred. So. Hey, this this man this this delay is the lag tonight is really hardcore. Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, for the night. If you guys have any question, you guys know I'm available all the time. I mean, it's really 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 hard to find a time that I won't answer your question. So if you have a question about anything feel free to shoot me a message i'm on instagram um it has old hand tool um you can reach out to me on facebook messenger you can email me at old at gmail.com um you can reach out to me on on facebook itself it's really hard not to get a hold of me so um that's it real simple chat with you guys soon if you have any questions about anything please feel free to ask um, definitely go check out the website. The sales of the website keep me able to do what I've done today for you guys. Demonstrations. Um, they keep things going. So, and at the end of the day, it is a business. It's, it's my, the way I make my living. So, support me. Have a good time, guys. Enjoy. And uh, we'll chat again soon.